Let's say you want to become a successful trader, but you're not sure who to listen to or what to do to become successful. You worry about learning the wrong lessons, developing bad habits, or listening to the wrong people. And this can be extremely frustrating, especially since you want so badly to become a consistently profitable trader and be successful at your passion, trading. Well, in this video, I'm interviewed by JC Peretz. He's a CMT. You know him on Twitter at All Star Charts. I'm the president on TV giving his market commentary. And JC interviews me about what it takes to become a successful trader and much more. I love how JC describes me as someone who spends more time with active traders than anyone he knows. <clears throat> I think that's probably right. And with that perspective, I hope that this interview gives you ideas to improve as a trader and gives you a place where you can get some of the right answers. We sit around here all day long observing traders who are very successful, who we've trained from new to consistently profitable and then seven figure traders. And we observe the guys who make it and what they do to make it and why they're making it and how they're making it and maybe some of the other people who are struggling. So stick around and listen to this veteran trader, this trading partner, this trading coach, and this trading author share what is truly important to become successful. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, managing partner of Estimate Capital, a proprietary trading firm located in exciting Midtown Manhattan. I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and the playbook. Click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the trading videos produced for the trading community. In this video, a trading partner, me, who spends more time with active traders than probably anyone on the street, is interviewed by my good friend, JC Peretz, at All Star Charts, a CMT, omnipresent on the TV cable stations that you guys are watching, and uh, the two of us in our interview, he gets me to share what it takes to become a successful trader based on my observation, working with all these guys who make it here. How and when the elite traders that I get a chance to work with, these seven figure guys inside the firm and outside the firm, how and when they're trading at their best and the commonalities I'm seeing with these guys. How our firm uses technology to improve P&L give you some ideas about what you can do to improve your P&L using technology. When you ought to quit as a trader, this is a, an honest assessment from me about when perhaps you need to move on. The common mistakes struggling traders make that I see, that I can share with you, and the one thing that's vital to reaching your potential as a trader. So please pay special attention to the anecdotes shared about the top traders that we've developed at our prop firm. They're gonna inspire you to become a better trader. If you want to learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running right now. Go ahead and click this link to sign up for that free webinar right now. You're going to learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. You're listening to the All-Star Charts Podcast with J.C. Peretz on technicalanalysisradio.com. All right, everybody. Today we have Mike Bellafiori. He's the managing partner at SMB Capital. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, J.C. Good to be with you. Pretty stoked that you're here. I always love uh, you know picking your brain, considering that you spend all of your time uh, with traders, right? So you um, you have an inside look as to you know why we're so screwed up in the head, right? You have a front row seat. Um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about about that and how you try to use it to your advantage, what you do at the shop, and everything like that? Well, I don't think all of our traders are screwed up in the head. Maybe only half, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we do. We're a short-term active prop trading firm in New York City, and we trade at U.S. equities and options and futures, and we also do some automated trading. And so 
mostly what we do is look for stocks that are in play and uh, look for setups that offer good risk rewards. And in our guys here, they trade in many different styles. There are different desks within inside of, of the firm. And so some guys are uh, micro scalping, some guys are swing trading, some guys are trading international ARB, some guys are doing M&A work, uh, some guys are spread options, spread trading options. We're trading a lot of the pot names right now. There are guys long, there are guys short, and there can be guys long, there can be guys short, and both can be making money based on how differently they trade. Time horizons and things like that. Yep. What do, what do you mean exactly by in play? What does that mean? Sure. So for us, an in play stock means that there's a news catalyst. So we start each day looking for the stocks that are, that are going to be the most in play. So, you know, yesterday the market thought X about a particular stock. And today you walk in and there's unusually positive news about the particular stock, or there's unusually negative news about the particular stock. And it's unexpected. So it's not priced into the market. And when you get those news catalysts that come into the marketplace, that offers a lot of volatility for those particular stocks. And you know, I was I was reading your last note that you sent out to your customers about how you know you don't just put all your money into uh, the indexes because uh, if you're just buying the indexes, then uh, as you said, that's going to lead to average returns what what we're doing is we're moving around and so you know last year we had a great year and the 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 area that the sector that we made the most gains in was in bitcoin and really so you guys were trading a lot of crypto last year huh and we couldn't yeah and we and we didn't have and and even with crypto we didn't have exposure to spot crypto that lots of other people did. We, we had limited ac access to uh, GBTC, which was one of the ways that we could express long and short ideas in Bitcoin. And you know, it was only towards a little bit later that we could trade uh, Bitcoin futures. So that was, that was, but that was a huge opportunity for us. And we made money long, we made money short, we're not, sitting there needing for a particular sector to go up or down which is not the way that we trade yeah well we'll we'll trade short when something's overextended we'll trade long when it's uh, oversold we'll trade the middle of the range we're trading actively it's it's a unique niche to how to how to go about trading that's really um, cool and then mike I mean, what about the other traders that are like in the in the office are they communicating constantly are they always talking about what each other are trading how does that sort of camaraderie uh, help one another so we break up our desk our overall desk into sub desks and we call them teams so the teams are made up of a senior guy somebody who has consistently made money through lots of different years who has a particular niche in markets and has clear edge and then junior traders underneath that senior trader and the junior traders get to learn from this particular senior trader. They get to see all of the positions the senior traders are in in real time. They get to talk to the senior traders about what they're doing in real time. They get to prepare before the open with the senior trader as to what that senior trader, what stocks that senior trader is going to trade, the overall thesis that senior trader has about the individual day the junior traders will chime in and offer supplemental ideas to that senior trader. The junior traders may build technology needs for the senior trader. That's cool. Um, and so the, the idea is all of the new hires come in after a, a careful se selection process and 
we start to get a feel for what kind of trader we think they're going to be. And we try and match them with the desk, with the unique style that our senior traders are trading. And so that's really smart. Instead of trying to force one particular strategy down their throats, kind of figure out what sort of personality they are, figure out what their time horizon is going to be. And then you most likely have, uh, you know, somebody that can, that can fit that style. That's really smart, huh? Yeah. And, and we don't think it works if you uh, force people into a particular style, because look, we all have our different cognitive strengths and personality strengths and uh, you know, intellectual uh, strengths. And so, um, you know, for instance, one of our really, really top traders on our desk, probably our, our top trader, who's actually inside right now, giving a lecture to the rest of the desk uh, on sizing, is has this uh, incredible, incredible talent, incredible, incredible cognitive skills to be able to trade lots of different names at the same time on a short-term basis. So he can trade 30 different stocks on a short-term basis and trade them well. I'm getting yeah. dizzy just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, and, and if we took everybody and asked them to trade 30 different names actively well, very few people would be able to do it. In fact, uh, one, of the, one of the guys who is, is also at our firm, who's a seven-figure trader, uh, and sits real real close to this trader who can trade 30 different names at the same time. And th these guys bounce ideas off of each other. They're actually on the same team. He he can really only trade one or two ideas at the same time very well. And, you know, both of them have outstanding results. Both both of them are completely outperforming the market. But you you got to be exposed to edge, but then you, you have to let the guys find the niches that are best for their individual strengths. I mean, you know, I, as you, you know, you were a college athlete uh, like myself and, you know, it would be as if, I, I don't know what your best pitches were as a pitcher, <laughs> but it would be as if. Not um, the fastball. <laughs> it would be as if, okay. So it would be as if I was your pitching coach and told you, JC, uh, you are to focus in getting hitters out with your fastball. You know, what kind of results would you have? I'd be getting shelled. You would get shelled, of course. And so- You played at UConn, right? Yes. I actually got back-to-back -back home runs hit off me at UConn. <laughs> We're throwing too many fastballs, probably. <laughs> <clears throat> That's, uh, I'm surprised to hear that. No, I'm surprised to hear that. Still hurts. But I mean- the, one, one of them's still going, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well. Good for us. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> but I mean, it, it really does bring up the fact that, you know, we, we do train people at the beginning in the same way. We do expose them to the different trades that our guys make money on on the desk, but then they gravitate towards the one that make the most sense to them. What do you do for the guys? What do you do for the traders? I assume um, while we're on that subject, I was just assuming guys, are there a lot of females that come through uh, the shop? There aren't. And uh, I've written about this a bunch. And, uh, we, you know, for some reason, if you look at the applicant pool, there's just very few women that apply to trading firms. And uh, I, I've, I've written about a bunch hoping that more would apply and it just hasn't been the case yet you've been running the shop for a while you've seen it yeah we've been we've been running smb since uh since 2005. wow it's a long time congratulations on that so then what do you do for the guys to 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 help them out mm -hmm. and make sure that they keep improving and getting better is it like a a program or something like that or books that you suggest to read or both so we're fortunate to be able to work with somebody who I think is the best trading coach in the country, Dr. Brett Steenbarger. Yeah, no doubt. I'll be with him in San Diego uh, next month. All right, great. Um, and so traders here get to work with him and he works with 
a, a lot of the traders here. And specifically, the way that uh, he works with traders here is one, he'll come in and you can have a one on one session with Dr. Steenbarger. And then, you know, also if you want to have a follow up phone call with him, you, you can do that as well. And then, uh, one of the things that Dr. Steenbarger suggested that we do with our top traders last year, and, and I call this the MVP of 2017 for our trading desk, the, the thing that helped us the most. And, and we had a, a year where we outperformed the marketplace last year was uh, Dr. Steenbarger suggested that our top traders create a daily report card and send them to Dr. Steenbarger and myself each day. And what the top traders started doing was they picked one goal. They picked one goal that they wanted to work on to improve. They worked on it intensively. They created solutions to be able to get better at that goal. And then we provided feedback on a daily basis as to what we were seeing uh, from them. And so you know, I, I think this this brings us into a, a fertile topic in trader development, which is there are lots of people that think that the only thing that they need to do to be a successful trader is find edge, find setups that are money making. And, you know, my experience has been that that's not necessarily the, the holy grail, that you can be exposed to edge. You know, in fact, I'll take our top trader on our desk. Our top trader on our desk is you know, a multi seven figure a year trader. And uh, he has a team of junior guys underneath him. These junior guys, they all trade the same stocks as the senior trader. And you know, as I think about it, they actually are all profitable, but they all trade uniquely. They all have their own style, every single one of them. And you know, they can't trade the way that the senior trader does. But, but again, they're in the same stocks. They're directionally similar than, than the senior trader, but they're going about it in you know, a, a very unique way. And so, um, you know, Dr. Steenbarger and I work with this. And so yeah, these traders have been exposed to edge, but they've had to make it their own. And then, you know, it, when guys actually have some edge, and I think there's a lot of traders out there that don't make money, but but inside of that not making money overall, there really is edge. If they just dig deep into all their trading and find what they're best at, and when we do that, we can we can take what they're good at and really build from there. And you know, so lots of the the work that uh, I do and somebody like Dr. Steenbarger will do is take guys who have edge and make them so much better. I think people think oh, once I just get this edge, it's going to be the end of the road. Once you get edge, there's so much more that you can be doing. And then even <clears throat> the trader that I was mentioning, who's you know, a, a multi seven figure trader, his goals over the next two or three years are to become a $10 million a year guy. And he's working with Dr. Steenbarger and myself and, and the traders here to lay the groundwork so he gets to that point, so he gets to that level. What's he doing <clears throat> that others aren't, that he's he's doing better than the others? No, one of the things that that he does better than, than other people is he comes to the game with a lot of talent. So he has an ability to process information that um, surpasses other, other people. It's like, you know, we'll bring it back to uh, your, your baseball days. I don't know how fast you threw, but Not it's very. the difference. You know, he, you know he, he can throw, if you can throw a hundred miles an hour, and you're working with a guy who can throw 100 miles an hour um, versus working with a guy who can throw 82. On a good day. He can throw, he can throw 100 miles an hour. 
So Got he's it. he's bringing more talent to the table. Um, secondly, he uh, has learned to trade other products. So he's expressing his edge in multiple ways. And a third, he's expressing his his edge with more sophistication than other people. So as he's trading bigger, he needs to control his risk reward better. And he's got to be able to do that by expressing his trades in, in different ways. So he can't just trade stocks anymore. He has to trade stocks and options and and do that as well. Also, he uses the technology at the firm to a, a pretty high level. Our, our, we have proprietary technology at the firm that allows you to build alerts. I know you're going to be talking to the trade ideas uh, guys out there in San Diego soon. You know, but we have internal tools that enable guys to let them play more offense. So they can find their pitch more often. They can build alerts to find the setups that are best for them. They can build scripts that if they see certain variables in, in the marketplace in a particular stock, they can immediately get into the stock and then they'll trade out of it with discretion. And then they can they can also uh, use the technology at our firm to uh, back test certain ideas and, and build automated models. Um, so he does, a, he does a really good job with technology, but the best thing that he does above everybody else is that he's always just trying to get better. He is a, at our firm, if you make a million dollars net, you get a green shirt. If you make $2 million net plus for the year, you, you get a black shirt and you know, he's a black shirt and better trader. <laughs> nice. He's trying to get, he's trying to become a $10 million a year trader. What's and, that pink shirt? <laughs> <laughs> we should, uh, we should give it a pink shirt, but, uh, and but what so, about all these stories you always hear, huh? you know, active trading can't return substantial profits, right? You know, uh, uh, the, you know, RI, passive RIAs, journalists, like they love saying those things, but it's just, it's inaccurate, right? So there are, there are uh, probably some pretty bad passive uh, investors, and I'm sure there's some pretty bad uh, active traders as well. Um you, you got to find what you're good at. You, you got to gravitate towards the type of trading that uh, enables your, your, your strengths to come out. And so, you know, we have, I can just tell you from our experience here, we've got plenty of green shirt traders and plenty of black shirt traders uh, that are walking around the halls here and they're still getting better every day. And so, you know, what we're doing is we're moving to the places that are most in play. We're, we're trading Bitcoin when it's in play, when it's not, we're moving on. We're trading the pot names now. <clears throat> you know, when, when Baba is starting to break down, we're moving our money towards there on the short side. You know, we're trading Nike, we're trading Lulu, we're trading Sonos today. Um, you know, we are very heavily focused on the pot names right now. We're, we're looking at CRON, we're looking at uh, TLRY. We're looking at CVSI. You know, we're 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 looking at CGC. We're we're moving our money to the to the stocks that are most volatile, and doing that time and time again allows us to you know outperform the overall market. So here's a guy that you're saying you know has a lot of talent, right? And he's always trying to get better. What about why don't we, why don't we flip that around? Because I've always learned the best lessons by kind of learning, uh, you know, what not to do. What sort of mistakes are you seeing? I mean, you're literally surrounded by traders every day for a decade plus. I mean, what is the 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 the, the common theme behind the ones that don't succeed? Yeah, I mean, they're not trading with edge, so they're they're trading setups that don't work, and they're they think it's their psychology or their mind or them or their you know, they're they're not trading setups uh, with edge, you know, or they're trading a, a particular style that's not suited for their personality. You know, for instance, let's take that that senior trader who has a bunch of junior guys who are have access to him. If they all tried to trade his specific trades, they would do miserably. 
what they can do is they can tailor what they're learning from him and make it their own and and build those unique strategies. And so you now there's lots of reasons guys don't make it. They don't have enough capital. Their technology is not good enough. Maybe they're just not good enough. You know, you and you and you and me are not playing. I wanted to play for the New York Yankees and I wasn't good enough. I mean, that's that, that's the reality of this game. You have to have enough talent to be able to, to, to be able to do it. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that I think I see on the Internet that sort of I scratch my head at and I shake my head at when I see is, you know, never give up as a trader. And that's terrible advice. <laughs> that's terrible advice. I mean, there are people that are not cut out to be good traders. And, you know, granted, you should give it plenty of time. And granted, you should go about it the right way and get good training and have a good capital base and uh, be around people that have, have <clears throat> that have edge. But and you should try different products. You, you may not be in the right product at, at the beginning. But you know, there should become a point where you shouldn't put your, your family in financial jeopardy uh, after several years to, 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 and keep banging your head against the wall. If you have talent in something, it should come out. You know, it's like when you were a kid, I'm sure you were the best person on your team when you were young. I mean, that's why you kept playing baseball. It comes out. You should be able to see it. You should be able to say, I'm making progress in this game. I'm getting things. I'm being able to put the pieces together. And, and, and if not, you should do something else. And it's okay to go about trading and, and, and not be successful. <clears throat> That's the other thing I sort of don't get about what's out there in, in, in the trading world, which is I mean, think about how many people try and become major league uh, pitchers and how many can actually do it. And think about how many people try and become professional golfers and, and can really do it. And think about how many people try and become uh, professional actors or how many people can be professional writers. Um, or how many people can be, you know, movie makers? It's uh, or how many people can be a professional model? It's it's a different gig, and, uh, and the upside's great, and there's certainly lots of people who can do it, but but certainly not everybody. And, that, and that's fair, and that's a good. Uh, I mean, I think that's sound advice. You know, never give up as a trader. Sometimes, like you know, you got to call it quits. Like you said, especially if you have a family, you have responsibilities. You know, you're just being ir irresponsible. Um, and, and, and this is, you know, a lot of the stuff is discretionary that we're talking about. You mentioned earlier how you do have some automated stuff. How has that changed, right? You've been around, what, 13 years? Is that right? Something like that? Our firm has been around since uh, 2005. I've been around since uh, since the late 90s. And and how has the, the automation uh, of, of trading kind of evolved <laughs> over the last 20 years, you think? So... The way it's different is it gives traders more than one career path. So it used to be when we started SMB Capital that you could only come in and be a discretionary trader. And now if you come into uh, our firm, you can be a discretionary trader. You can be what I call a hybrid trader, somebody who builds models and uses technology to make better trade decisions, um, or you can be just an automated trader. So you have, you now have three different paths to be a professional trader. In fact, you know, one of the, the, the newest green cert traders at the firm, he was, you know, just a, an okay discretionary trader. And it wasn't until he started becoming more of a hybrid trader and supplemented that with automated trading that he was really able to excel. And so now he runs a bunch of different models and now he takes trades based on signals that are firing, that he's built for himself. And it's, it's, it's a his, his results are completely different because he's going about it in a way that's better for him. So there's different paths. And then the other thing is, I mean, the guys that come into the firm, they are taught differently. So now there is a, a training program that everybody goes through where they learn how to build alerts, build scripts, and learn how to start the process to being an automated trader. Everybody learns how to backtest. 
everybody learns how to build scripts and models and you know guys are spending time on that every day they're not just spending 100 percent of their time as as discretionary traders now we still make you know most of our p l is still coming from discretionary trading but there are guys that are they're doing well as automated traders and they they have that option there are guys who are deciding that they don't want to focus on discretionary trading at all and want to solely focus on automated trading um, early in their career who who can do that are you is that the trend is that what you're seeing more and more of that as time goes on i don't see that as a trend actually on our desk i i see I don't see the trend. I see more guys doing more automated trading on our desk, but I, I still see the discretionary guys being the ones who make the most P&L. And what I'm seeing is that the good discretionary guys who are also using technology that the firm offers, the, the scripting capability, uh, models, to supplement what they're doing, alerting functionality to play more offense, that they're making even more money. Um, and so, you know, what I'm seeing is that if you're a discretionary trader who is making money and you're not fully getting your hands dirty with technology, well, you can make a lot more money as a trader. You're leaving a lot of money on the table and your upside's a lot more than you think. Um, when you start to use technology. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about the current environment um, and where kind of stocks are now. Over over the years, when I lived when I lived in New York, you would uh, you take me out for beer sometimes and have me meet you know some of your more stubborn traders. The market has continued higher since then. I remember a lot of them. Uh, you asked me to talk to them because you know they just <laughs> love trading, you know, shorting, the, uh, buying the VIX, right? And you know, it just it didn't make any sense. So you, I guess you tried to talk to him, and uh, it didn't work. Hopefully, I, I was able to knock some sense into him. Uh, what about now? What are you seeing uh, from from the traders, uh, the guys that are getting it right, the guys that are getting it wrong in in the, in the today's environment? It's September of 2018. I remember that. I remember we uh, we 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 got together, and you know, we wanted to. We wanted you to talk to some guys and and sort of say, you know, hey, we're in a bull market. And uh, actually, one of the guys that you talked to uh, was always shorting the market. And he was actually a really talented guy. I remember the guy specifically who was was particularly stubborn. And uh, we ended up um, we ended up asked. Well, we he got. I don't want to use the word fired, but uh, he was transitioned out of the firm, and uh, he was just—he just had a bias that he would not get over. And we would work with him on: Can you fine keep doing what what you like to do? Fine, keep keep shorting, but can we take some profits a little bit more? Can you be more selective with your shorts? You know, maybe let's wait for the most overextended uh, moves um, and you know that particular trader wasn't doing terribly but just just wasn't really making enough money relative to the risk that we were taking on him um, and you know and now that I think about it we should we should have you come back in and and talk to some of the guys about you know how you're how you are going about finding signals for for longs and shorts on a longer time for a longer time basis, even though our time basis is, a, is is more condensed, I think our guys would would really like that. And we try and do that. We try and get our traders to talk with other leading market participants so that they make better trade decisions. Um, you know, for instance, Todd Harrison has generously uh, agreed to come in and, and talk to us, and he'll be in. Uh, this month to talk about the pot names. Tell them I say hi. I, I will do that. Um, and uh, we, we've had some some really interesting guys come in, and and the idea is to help guys expand their their network and get them 
expand their knowledge about markets and get them to make better trade decisions. Um, so we got to do that again. So when can you do that? Um, while, next, while time, next time on, I'm in New York. While you're on the call, let's let's get that done. Yeah, get it get it on the calendar. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. You want to know something funny? I, I I guess I presented your guys. I don't know, five six years ago, maybe something like that. And um, I I think you use it in one of your training videos or something like that. I get random emails all the time from like young traders, like, Hey JC, I got you from you know an SMB webinar or whatever. Um, I get I get those all the time for years. Isn't that funny? Yeah, you make it so. So we'll let's, we'll definitely have to get you back in, and uh, I think that'll be. I think you guys would really like that. I think that uh, a, a sort of top-down view would be, you know, really great for them. And I'd love you. You know, even though I'm a very very short-term trader and you're a longer-term guy, I, you know, I love reading your notes. It's it gives me color on you know what other people in the marketplace are are thinking about, and there's a big world out there. Um, well, I appreciate so, that. I appreciate that. Yes. So tell me about this, the summer trader. You let him go. What What about now? What, that, what sort of mistakes guy, are you seeing in today's environment? The, one particular guy that I'm talking about, he was the best trader at his firm at one point. And uh, we, we brought him on and we, we, he just, you know, he, there are certain guys that just want to trade. They want the market to trade the way they wanted to. And they they have this they have they use the market to fulfill some need that allows them to be right and others to be wrong and if you're doing that you're really going to get yourself in trouble um and i i totally intellectually understand why people want to short the markets and i i even understand intellectually why people would want to short the markets for, since 2009 i just it's just as a trader, it's just not there. You you have to be very selective about, and there's ways to make money on the short side, 100%. I mean, you have to just wait for overextended stocks. But you, you, I mean, shorting the market, it, there's 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 no evidence for that. And and we deal with that a lot on our desk. Like for instance, this I don't know if you're watching this TLRY, but I mean, I, I, there are really a lot of people that can make a strong argument that it should be a hundred dollars right now. Um, essentially being a four bagger in, in, in short order. But, and let's just say we think that that stock is, is way overbought. We're not just going to short it. That Our thesis is it's overbought and it ought to pull in. And we're going to look for very specific setups inside of our playbooks to match our thesis. And, you know, one of the things that that I do at the firm is you know I, I will work with closely with our seven figure guys and I, I also get a chance to work with some some really large traders outside of our firm as we as we run our education business called SME Trading and so I mentor some really large traders outside of our firm as well and you know what I see with these largest traders is the ones that are doing the best are the ones that develop a thesis but then wait until there's a setup from their playbook that develops and then wait for confirmation that that setup is going to work from the tape, from the level two. And then they fight for price. They get in at really good price. And, and those, those four prongs are what I'm seeing time and time again. And I'm, I'm talking about guys who are seven figure guys trading different products, uh, trading different markets, different time zones, you know, all over the world. And I also see when those guys struggle that they're starting to think like that specific guy that you and I are talking about, who I was trying to get him to listen to you or get a different perspective about how this market's not gonna go down, who trade their bias or trade their thesis without there being confirmation without there being a setup that's that's showing you. So if you think this TLRY is up too much, you got to wait for the kill candle, and you got to wait for the backside of the trade, as we say to to get in. You got to wait for the kill candle. You got to wait for the uh, retracement that's 
not particularly strong. You got to look for that increased volume into that kill candle. You got to look for the spacing of it to be much longer than you would expect it. You got to be waiting for it to be below VWAP. And so, you know, you're looking for spe specific variables as opposed to just being that one person who says, I think something should go down or I think something should go up. Nobody cares what you think. You're one person. <laughs> Nobody cares. There's so many people in the marketplace doing so many different things that and sometimes they're not even related. Could be just a, a big redemption. They may not even be related to uh, fundamentals or price. It just it may just be. I try to tell people all the time, like, oh yeah, the stock's down three percent. Why is it down three percent? I have no idea why it's down three percent. Like there might be like somebody who had a huge position and is getting slaughtered in their natural gas futures position, and they need you know they they need they need they need assets you know cover margins. Who 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 knows why the stock is down three percent just because some journalist said that you know because uh, of a of a new deal or a bomb exploded in Syria, so it's an oil stock. You know they're literally just making it up. They don't know either why it's moving. No, we saw this. We saw this last week. I did like I saw this in, in Nike last week. So, Nike, Nike gap down three percent. I think you remember when they came out. Nike comes out, and you know, super super interesting trade. Nike comes out, and that the former NFL quarterback uh, Kaepernick was named to be the the face of Nike's new ad campaign, and you know, stock gaps down about three percent. Arval on that day, relative volume was four, so really in play. Yeah, institutional ownership, I think, is like 83% in Nike. And you know, I'm sitting on the desk, and I thought the stock was going to go down, and lots of people thought it was going to go up, and I, I thought it was going to go down because, you know, I, I think you probably experienced this having lived in New York City, but you know, to me, this was a classic example of uh, coastal elites versus the upstate New Yorkers slash Midwestern part of the world where, you know, there are people in upstate New York and in the, in the Midwest who are going to be really upset about Nike's new ad campaign. They're going to be really upset and they're going to stop buying their products and they're going to stop buying their products forever. And anytime they actually see anyone in their family wearing one of these products, they're going to say something versus the other side of the trade, which is Nike wants to get newer and fresher and younger. And those newer millennials have disposable income and they love the fact that Nike puts out this, this campaign. They love and view this as Nike showing courage that they're going to put an ad campaign out that. And I don't know who's right or wrong. And but but I can make trades that that make sense to me and that that fit with with inside a trading system. And so I'm not just going to short that right away. I'm going to look for the resistance. I'm going to look for a setup that fits my playbook. I'm going to look for the confirmation. You know, for us as short-term traders, we want things holding below VWAP. And I know you're good friends with Brian Shannon, who teaches us really well. Yeah. You know, we want to be short things that are holding consistently below VWAP. And if they're not, we don't want to be short anymore as active traders. And so, you know, if my thesis is I think Nike should go down, I'm looking for a very clear resistance level and I'm looking for it to hold below VWAP and I'm looking for certain things. And if it's if it's not, then I'm gonna exit and, and move on. And that helps clarify me being wrong on a particular position. And I was I was wrong on that trade. Yeah, we're, and, we're, we're, we're buying Nike. I love it. I think it goes a lot higher. <laughs> that's great. And I and I can tell you where I would buy, I would have bought that if I had that thesis comfortably as well. Um, but, you know, on that trade, we made a couple of bucks on it, was completely wrong, and then moved on and went on to something else. Um, but we weren't stubborn, like that trader you mentioned about saying, Nike has to go down because this ad campaign is going to be terrible for their company. Well, that was my thesis, and more people disagree with me than agree with me. Yeah, clearly. And I'm, and I'm out. So. All right.
That's good advice because it's hard for us as humans. You know, we have egos, you know, th these are all natural emotions, right? We have to overcome them. But having those feelings and having that ego, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's perfectly natural. It's what we do about it and be aware of it. And, and then, like you just said, like, all right, you're wrong. Who cares? Move on, fight another day. There's a zillion other stocks that, that are moving. The beauty of liquid public markets, as you are well aware, is that the one thing that we're guaranteed is more opportunities. 100%. And, you know, not using Nike as, as an example, I want to see certain things. And I think you should tap into those those human emotions. I don't, I don't think you should be suppressing your emotions, but you want to have rules for your trading so that you can trade bigger and that you can make good trade decisions. And so um, <clears throat> that's, that's sort of part, that's part of the game. It's interesting you said don't suppress your emotions, right? Because I feel like I try to do that, you know, um, suppress them, you know, like for, you know, I, I, I've learned the hard way that when you, when things are good, it's not as good as you think. And when things are bad, it's not as bad as you think. Right. So I try to be more balanced, but I, I've, I've been around plenty of trading floors and, you know, you see the erratic behavior, the slamming of the desks and the, you know, chest pumping when they're right. Like, you, you think you encourage that, that sort of uh, extreme behavior? So there's, uh, there is using your emotions as information, and then there's allowing traders to be assholes. And so <laughs> put, that, put your example in the latter category. So what I, mean, what I mean by that is, you know, so Twitter is something that to me, when it got below that that uh, 31 area uh, technically is is in a little bit of trouble um i say that because you know that was the area that held up after earnings and it held up there twice after that pretty big down move from 44 45 and you know below that sort of 31 ish area I think for the for the near term right now, I, th I think it's it may be oversold for a bit, but I think that's that's a sell signal. I don't know how you feel about that. If but, we're uh, below 31, yeah, um, I, I don't disagree. But I'll tell you what, if we're above 31, I like it long. <laughs> yeah. So I, no, and I think that that's. But remember, it we I think on Friday we finally closed below 31. Yeah. And that's to me, we're in a little bit of trouble. If I agree with you. That's, that's that, a big level. We can get above that. We can get a nice little squeeze potentially. So today we got. So today, so I started shorting a little bit when we got below uh, 31 for a swing, and I thought it needed to go find a, a little bit of support. And today it went all the way down to 30, and then today it went up to 31.40 ish. Yeah. And it was it was. I remember I was sitting in my seat and I was like, getting a little bit anxious as to all the buying that was going on, and I was like. I must be so wrong. Look how aggressively they're paying the offer. And, and and I know that when I start to feel that way, that that could be a near term top. When I'm when I'm starting to get a little bit agitated at, at the aggressive buying, that's information that I know how to use. And you're so, close. you know, you know, you're close. When you yeah, start I'm that. like, I, I feel like maybe I'm wrong on the trade, but I, I kind of know like right here. It's probably going to go down in the short term, um, and then I can deal with it at a at a better price. So that's, but but you, you have to tap. You have to sort of understand that those emotions are information, and so that's what I mean by tapping into that that information. Um, and that's important for a discretionary trader. If you if you get a little bit overheated or start to feel frustrated, and you've been watching something for two three days, and you measure what happens after that, and you notice that that can be a turning point. Um, then why would you suppress that? Why would you suppress those emotions? That's pretty important information, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's that, that's a fair point. So, but again, mm -hmm. try to use your emotions as information. Don't be uh, no end zone dances. No, or and or you know you come in and you're feeling really aggressive on the day. You know you you're gonna have to take a step back and say to yourself, let me go for a walk for ten minutes. I'm aggressive. I'm gonna probably trade too big and be a little bit sloppy here today. I know what happens, but I'm going to absorb that information and be self-critical of how I'm feeling and adjust my trading.
That's that's great advice. Let me ask you this: you you mentioned to me that um, that you have a, a webinar uh, coming up, or there's a, a link that people can can sign up and kind of learn about the things that you're you're doing. Can you can you tell the audience a little bit about that? Yep. Next webinar we are holding, we will teach three uh, setups from our trading desk that we're using on a daily basis. So these are three setups with Edge that our traders are using on our prop desk on a daily business. And we're gonna, in a step-by-step -step basis, uh, teach you those. And you can go and find it at smbu.com slash free webinar, uh, smbu.com slash free, F-R-E-E, -E, webinar, W-E-B-I-N-A-R, and check it out. And I will put that link in the show notes uh, so everybody can uh, go to allstarcharts.com slash podcast and it will be there. Um, so Mike, thank you uh, for being here. I love this conversation. I think you bring a lot to the table because you're literally always with traders. So I think you, um, you, you have a lot of great experience with that. So I think uh, it adds some value to a lot of the other guests that we've had uh, on, on the show. So it's complimentary and everything like that. So thanks for being here and I'll see you soon in New York. Go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the trading videos produced for the trading community from us. Please add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like us to produce next and what you found helpful from these videos. From all of us at SMB, trade well.